ni mai donga ma atong morob tarang. Welcome to Atong Spelling Lesson 7, Two Types of Meaningful Parts. I start this video with a correction which I need to make. In my previous video, Lesson 6, I made a mistake when I was talking about the meaningful parts in the word redemok. I will correct this mistake now. A friend told me that this word has not two, but three meaningful parts. One of them we had already identified, it was ok. But redum also has two meaningful parts, namely r, meaning carve in English, and dum, meaning grow in English. The meaningful part ok has another form, ak, as in saak or rayak. This meaningful part indicates a change of state. Change of state means that something has changed and things are different than before. For example, redemok means that a plant has changed from not sprouting to already sprouted. And saak means that something has changed from not eaten to eaten, or someone has changed from not having eaten to having already eaten. Now let's start lesson 7. In this lesson, we will continue learning about meaningful parts and we will see that there are two major types, namely roots and bound parts. We will learn how they are used to make words. After learning this, you will see that writing atong words is simply a matter of combining meaningful parts one after the other. If you don't know what meaningful parts are, I suggest that you watch lesson 6 in the previous video first. You can click on this link to watch it now. There are two major types of meaningful parts in Atong. Roots, Atong Sang Balcido, Kata Chadul Ma Chadul Donga, and Bound Parts, Atong Sang Balcido, Pansok Donga. A root is the beginning of a word just like it is the beginning of a tree. It is from the root that the tree grows. The Atong word for this term is Chadul. Usually, a root can be used on its own as a word in a sentence. Bound parts do not usually occur on their own, but are almost always bound to a root. In Atong we can call bound parts panso, because that is the end of a branch where the tree grows. When talking about spelling, pansok is where the word grows. You cannot use the bound part aronga on its own in a sentence but you can attach it to the root sa to eat to create saaronga. You cannot just use the bound parts teri and a in a sentence as words by themselves, but you can attach them to a root, for example sa, be sick, and create the word sa teria. Similarly, you cannot use the bound part au on its own as a word in a sentence but you can attach it to the root bipa to create bipao. Here you see that one chadil can have many pansok. The word is jalang teritiria dung kuwa konte. The root is jal. All the other meaningful parts are pansok. Chadil, or roots in English, have a clear meaning and can often be used on their own as words in a sentence. Examples of chadil are Nok, the kum, pak, sa, rung, and chai. Chadil can be used on their own in a sentence. For example, in the sentences get teng mung nok gurumok and the kum sa. The words nok and the kum are only chadil without any pansok attached. The other words in the sentences are combinations of chadil and pansok together. Pansok, or bound parts in English, cannot be used on their own as words in a sentence, and they have a meaning that is not very clear and not easy to talk about. Examples of pansok are au, tekei, chi, ok, do, and gaba. Pansok cannot be used on their own as words in a sentence, but are combined with chadil to make words, as in this sentence. Here we see the pansok in green and blue color. It is no problem when you cannot explain the meaning of every meaningful part. When you speak Atong as a native speaker, 
You already use them correctly when you speak anyway, so don't worry. For a tongue spelling, it is enough to know that meaningful parts exist and that words are just meaningful parts written one after the other in their appropriate forms. So, we have two types of meaningful parts, chadl or roots, and pansok, or bound parts. Chadl usually have a clear meaning and can be used on their own as words in a sentence. Pansok can usually not be used on their own as words in a sentence and they have a meaning that is not very clear and difficult to talk about. It is easier to explain to someone what the meaning is of nok than what the meaning is of gaba. Some words are just one meaningful part by themselves. In other words, one ta'dil is one word. Like for example, the words nok, hap, dekum, jal, tako, and ka'sin. Meaningful parts can be combined to make longer words. We can combine a kata chadl with another kata chadl to make a word. For example, we can combine the words nok and hap, which are both kata chadl, and make the word nok hap. We can combine the words de gum and pak to make the word de pak. We can combine the three chadl, matsa, nok, and bantai to make the word matsa nok bantai. We can also combine chadl and pansok together to make longer words. For example, we can combine the kata chadl nok and the bound part sang to make the word nok sang. We can combine the kata chadl de gum and pak with the bound part or pansok chi to make the word de pak chi. We can combine the three chadl or roots matsa, nok and Pantai with the pansok or bound parts an, cha and kon to make the word matsa nok pantai an cha kon. And as our last example, we can combine the cha dul or roots mu with the pansok sao and naka to make the word mu sao naka. Now let's do an exercise to see what you have remembered. Exercise 1. Find the chadl, the roots. Please get a pen or pencil and a piece of paper ready. You will see and hear five atong words. After I have read the words, pause the video and write the chadl of each word on your paper. Ready? Here we go. Mangsa, mutanwa, mutanwa, mangni, maksukol ba. Maksukol tekei ba. Mang tam. Jamok kon te. Jamok kon te. Mang berei. Rai ya butung chi. Rai ya butung chi. Mang banga. Tau nok neng chi kon te. Tau nok neng chi kon te. Now pause this video and find the roots of these words. Exercise jamok. Let me give you the solutions. Here are the roots of the words. Mang sagaba mi chadul do, mu. Mang nigaba mi chadul do, mang niganang. Ma su aro kol. Mang tamgaba mi chadul do, jam. Mang berregaba mi chadul do, rai. Mang bangagaba mi chadul do, mang tamganang. Tau, nok aro neng. Let's do another exercise. Exercise 2. Use the meaningful parts. You will see some meaningful parts. Some are chadl and others are pansok. Combine them in different combinations. Which words can you make with them? Are you ready? Here we go. Make as many words as you can. Now pause this video. Have you written all possible words yet? If not, pause this video again. Exercise jamok. Let me show you the solutions. Here you see a lot of the words you could have made with the kata chadl and pansok when you combine them. Maybe you have found even more words than you can see here. That is totally okay. 
Before we end this video, there is a bit more we need to know about Chadel and Panso. We have seen that Chadel can be used as words on their own in a sentence, but there are a few kata Chadel that cannot be used on their own. These Chadel always need to be combined with some Panso. We call this type of Chadel Chadel Kagaba or bound roots. One of these chadl that always needs a pansok in order to be used as a word is b. B cannot be used on its own. We have to combine it with a pansok before we can use it as a word in a sentence. For example, we can combine the root b with a pansok chi, sang, or tekei to make bichi, bisang, or bitekei. Another chadl that cannot be used on its own is i. Combined with some pansok, we can make words like isang, ichi, and itake, which we can use in a sentence. The kata chadl ie can be used on its own, as in the sentence datnang, ye jabek tawate. The chadl u needs companionship of some pansok as well, for example, uchi and utake. The kata chadl we can be used by itself in a sentence, as in datnang, we haba salate. Another chadl kagaba is mek. We never use this word alone, but we find it in words like mekren, mektei, and meksemel, where the root mek is bound to some other part. There are undoubtedly some other chadl kagaba in atong, but we will move on now. We have seen that pansok, bound parts, can usually not be used on their own. Usually, because there are some pansok that can be used as words on their own, without being bound to some chadl. We call them pansok dengaba, or particle in English. The meaningful part kon can be used as a bound part, for example in the word ringni kon, but it can also be used all by itself alone, when you answer hoong kon. In the word panichem, the meaningful part tem is bound, but when you say hoong tem, it is a word on its own. The meaningful part ma can be used bound, as in the word satni ma, but it is used as a word on its own in the sentence ye ma ue. Then there is mo. It is bound when we say satchawa mo, but it is a word on its own when we say it like this satchawa mo. Last, the meaningful part ne is bound when we say reknaka ne, but it is not bound when we say mukbo bai shiga ne. So, we have the chadl or ramram chadl, which we can use as words all by themselves. And we have the chadl kagaba, which always needs something tied to them. We also have the pansok, or ramram pansok, which cannot be used as words on their own, but always need to be tied to some chadl. And we have the pansok dengaba, which we can untie and use as words on their own. In the next video, we will learn more about the appropriate forms of meaningful parts. Senegaba kam jamok, chagaba o metela. Sengaba ganang chido, ma atongba balna sik chido, iye pidio cha machi ganangaba saigaba hapchi sayari bo. Iye pidio ao nem nukwachi, like button ao sik de bo. Walnam.